Welcome to the 73rd episode of the Meeple Society, a podcast about board games hosted by two longtime role players turned avid board gamers. My name is Katie. I'm Greg. On this episode, we talk about the elusive Grail game, as well as games we enjoy playing but don't really feel the need to own. We also plow through more new games to our collection, some crowdfunding arrivals, and some new splurges. We go through four recently played games and rate them new, old, borrowed, or ones that blew. And finally, Greg puts me on the hot seat and makes me answer questions from that infamous box. But first... Video releases. Okay. You've been busy since the last podcast. I have been. You got episode 64 of Playing Through a Collection edited and up. Finally. Took forever. The Dice Tower Retreat Wrap-Up yep. is up. Yep. And the Top 10 Pickup and Delivers is up. I, yep. And that one... That's we, my favorite one. We had a lot of fun doing that Oh one. my gosh, we had so much fun doing that one. If you don't know what we're talking about, go watch it. Definitely. But finish listening to the podcast first, then go watch it. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Well, we'll see. If they're listening to it on YouTube, they can just say, oh, let me go back and look at that. Yeah. Finish watching it. Or finish listening to this first. There you go. So new to our collection. <music> we have Deep Shelf, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Yes. We have River Valley Glassworks, which I know we'll be talking about here in just a few <laughs> moments. But we also have Landmarks. The funny thing about Landmarks is I think... We have recently started getting into more party games. We have, but I'm very picky on my party games. Yes. I like the games that house a large number of people, and I think the the 24-hour live stream we do is to blame for this, because yeah. I like having those games mm-hmm. that will hold a lot of people and are yet fun and challenging, and this fits that bill. And have a lot of interaction, and this yes, does. Yes, this absolutely fits <clears throat> that bill. I think we talked mm-hmm. about it on our, our wrap-up. So I'm not going to go yeah. into it too much, but you've got one person who is the the clue giver, mm-hmm. essentially, and that person has a card in front of them, similar to code names, where yeah. you know where all the good things are and all the bad things are, and you're trying to direct your the other people playing, the, the clue guessers, which way to go, but you're using one word clues to do it. So very similar to code names, only... This time you're actually moving around on a map, not yeah. just pointing to cards. Well, think of it like code names and uh, so Clover got together. Kind Cause, of, yeah. Because you you've yeah. got a word now that you have to associate with at least one other word that's already on the board and figure out where it's got to go. Yeah, and you're trying to lead them and, in a direction and, using those clues. Yeah, and the code it's, names part would be how the 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 to connect person, the two words. Yeah, yeah, the person is trying to get you to. Set it in the right spot to find all the treasure and stuff and not fall into the traps. It's a good one. This Mm -hmm. is one that we fully intend on. I'm going to try to make larger versions of some of the map pieces so that we can use it on the Live 24 Mm -hmm. and you can actually see it from overhead. So if you're interested, stay tuned for that. Of course, it won't be for like nine more months. So you've got plenty of time to plan for it. But (laughs) but I got and I got plenty of time to try and make the pieces. Yeah, it's not till June. Till June, yeah. We actually need to set the date yet. We haven't set a date. So, but anyway, more on that coming. Next is Hard Rock 1977. We played this at the retreat. We did not get a total playthrough of it done because you were, it was was late when we started. You didn't know what time it was when we started and and you got tired. Okay, I gave up at 145. I thought that was, (coughs) I I think I stuck it out for quite some time, but 145 was my limit. I was tired. But I loved what the game was doing. I, I was enjoying the game, so we picked it up. So yep. now we got to play it. We haven't gotten it to the table yet, though. We've nope. opened it up, punched it and everything, and, and we took it to a game day, but we didn't play it. Nope. Next was Terminus. Yeah. Or Term- Terminus. Terminus or Terminus. I'm not sure. <laughs> and I'm not sure which one's right. I'm thinking it's Terminus because it's Terminal. Terminals, yes. So, and this is a train that's a... Rail lane, city building kind of game yeah, you're with building, a rondelle. You're putting buildings in neighborhoods that gives you powers, and to get the power of that, you have to connect to it. To it, correct. <clears throat> um, but if you're the one laying down the neighborhood, you automatically, you automatically get, it. get it. But, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's an interesting game. We really enjoyed this. We played it yeah. at uh, the Dice Tower Retreat mm-hmm. with Matt, our, our root shirt guy friend. And really, really enjoyed the play of it. So we picked this one up along with all the Kickstarter bling that came with it. Mm-hmm. So, 
So these next two games, I've been doing a remodel for some people, and I came into work one day, and he was in the garage with these two, both of these games in his hand, and goes, "I hear you're the game board game guy. Would you like these?" And these are two games we don't have. So he's like, mm, "Okay, yeah, sure." Well, and I've I'm always wondered about that first one. So the first one is Hughes and Cues. Yeah. This is a cool one that where there's one person that has a card. That Again, the clue giver. The clue giver <laughs> has a card of a certain item, and you've got to figure out the color of it. And he has to give clues to get you to get to the color. I, I believe. guess I don't know. I've never even looked at the I, rules for this one. Yeah, I have, it just I've has always seen, seemed interesting. All I've seen was Tom Gassel yeah. reviewing it, and that was it. And that's been a while. I've heard good things about it, but this one's not cooperative like Landmarks mm-hmm. is. This is this is competitive. So yes, but it's is another it? one. Yeah, it's competitive. Is this competitive? It's wow, competitive. I did not realize that. Yes. So Blank Slate is the other one. Um, this one looks interesting. Yeah, this one, it's, uh, what is it? Pick one of 250 word cue cards and reveal it. Each player then writes the word they think best completes the phrase, trying to exactly match another player's word without giving a single hint. So it's kind of like just one backwards because you're trying to match up right you're trying to match up with only one other person because if you match up with more than one you get fewer points yeah you get fewer points because if you match up it's just you two just two of you get like three three points points. and if it's multiples it's just one point correct yeah so you're trying to match up with only one other person Mm -hmm. but if you don't match at all you don't get anything so yeah you want to match up with people Mm -hmm. so it looks interesting yeah we'll get that played soon hopefully yeah but yeah, that is that's all the new games we have in our yeah. collection that we put. That that's up. enough for two weeks. Yeah, two Kickstarter arrivals, three purchased that we played mm-hmm. at the the retreat and liked, and then the two, two were gifts. given to us. Yeah, yep. so that's enough. I don't know where we're putting them yet, so mm-hmm. <laughs> we are out of space. <laughs> so let's move into the banter. Okay. Grail games. How do you determine a game is a grill game for you? And how much would you pay for the game? So we have gotten two of our, or at least they we, were my grill games we to have, begin with. Okay, so yeah, the first grill game you ever had was Bruges. Uh, Bruges and I found that found for it. you for Christmas. Yes, I was totally I surprised. I wish I had been recording when he opened that gift. Yeah, I really I do. It was awesome. I never thought I'd ever see that game because we got to yeah. play it on our 30th wedding anniversary trip down in Tallahassee. Yeah. And we got to play to the game store down there. Yeah. And, and it like, instantly became a grail game after yeah. that. Well, I'd always seen people talking about it. It's like, it's a Stefan Feld game. I've got to play this game because we're big Stefan Feld right. people. But I was like, I'll never see this game because it's so expensive. Well, that was his one big Christmas present that mm-hmm. year. I think with shipping, and this goes into how much would you pay for it. With shipping, I think I paid 90 bucks. So it wasn't horrible. Um, now, mind you, the, the expansion is... Mm-hmm. Good luck. Which I've never, isn't, I've seen it, but it's really expensive, yeah. and I don't know that we which need it. Isn't so. bad for the base game of Bruges no, because no. I heard a podcast the other day. They were talking about Bruges, and they tell you how much it costs if you're looking for it, and they yeah. said anywhere between one fifty to two hundred dollars now. Wow. For so, yeah, nope. I'm I'm glad I got what I. I mean, like I said, I think I paid mm. seventy five mm. plus shipping for it. Mm-hmm. Which again, this was a many many years ago, so that to me that felt like a lot back then. But yeah, and Bruges, the city of Zwin, which is the uh, expansion for it. There's actually two. There's a pets one that you can easily find for like eighteen bucks. No, oh. okay. but city of Zwin also they were talking about because they they play all th- both expansions. But I was like, you lucky people. But uh, the city of Zwin actually changes the game up, I guess, but uh, makes it a little better. But they said, good luck finding it under $300. Ooh, yeah, like, you're holy not, cow. You're I'll not getting never that one. see that one. So that will be a long time grail yeah. game pickup for me. For that sure. will never happen. Unless I luck into it like an estate sale for 20 bucks. <laughs> good luck. Yeah. No, the only other great gale, grail game that I know we've ever had on our list was... Um, Oh, Chimera Station. Chimera Station. Thank you. I started to say Cosmoctopus. I'm like, nope, that's not it. No. <laughs> um, Chimera Station, which we <laughs> is on its way. Yes. I'll have it next Thursday. It. All right. And I think we talked about this on the wrap yeah. up. I don't remember. Um, but one of the gentlemen we got to play with who lives in Anchorage, Alaska, he ended up having it on his list for the the 
virtual flea market. Yes. And I did not see it because he posted it after the last time I had looked at the virtual mm-hmm. flea market. And he was willing. We went ahead and made arrangements, and, and he is shipping me the game. Mm-hmm. So cost me a total of, I want to say, with shipping, about 75 bucks. So I'm, I was happy, probably way more than it's worth, but I also know how hard it is to find. Yeah. So I'm okay with that. $100 is too much for a grill game. For an expansion? <laughs> Heck yes. <laughs> but for a grill game, if you ever, is there a game that you would love to have that is very hard to find now? I can't think of anything right now. Like I said, Chimera Station was my one mm-hmm. grail game and I found it and it's on its way. I can't think of anything offhand, but then I also don't, you don't like. I don't watch the games watch like through, I do. I don't watch that type of stuff. I don't. Listen. I don't read through posts. I don't listen. I, I'm the one who got you onto listening to podcasts, and, and now don't I don't to listen now. to them anymore unless we're in the car on a road trip. Well, I just mm-hmm. I've gotten to the point I can't stand having earphones in, earbuds mm-hmm. in, and and I could listen to them at work if I wanted to, but I'm one of those people that if I miss something, I have to rewind it because I missed something, mm-hmm. and at work. I'm constantly, every, I feel like every time I put an ear, one of my earbuds in, somebody came up and asked me a question and I'd have to take my earbud out and then reactivate my phone so I could pause it. And it just, it was too time consuming because it happened every single time. Within two minutes of putting my earbuds in, somebody came up and asked me a question. I finally gave up. <laughs> so, well, well, that's the downer of knowing how to do everybody else's job. I know. I know. Uh, oh, well, that's, it is what it is. Anyway, but what would be your limit on buying a grill game? I mean, it depends on the game. But, like, for Chimera Station, I was willing to pay up to $100 for it because mm-hmm. it's it's not a huge game. And and both uh, publishers are now out of business. So Correct. And I knew how hard it was going to be to find. Yeah, unless somebody was to pick it up. Yeah, and I don't think – I don't remember it ever making that big of a splash. So I didn't think it would ever be picked up again. Mm-hmm. So you don't hear anything about it anymore. Mm-hmm. Whereas with Bruges, Stefan Feld, he's a huge designer. I know that game has been remade in the City Collection. Yeah, it's. But I, I don't, I couldn't tell you which one it is or what it's all about because we is haven't played Amsterdam? any of the new City Collection. Amsterdam. Well, I take that back. We've played some of the new City Collection because we actually have Marrakesh, but that's the only one of the City Collection we've played. Yeah, but, but I can't. I used to know it. Now I can't remember which one. I, I thought it, it was Hamburg? Amsterdam. Hamburg. That's it. Okay. Well, Amsterdam was Macau. Okay. I don't know. I don't understand why they had to rename them anyway, because Bruges is the name of a city. Why Why rename mm-hmm. it to a different city? That did, that made no sense. Mm-hmm. But I, 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 uh, from what I understand, it's similar, but it's just different enough that it's yeah. not really Bruges. And maybe that's why they renamed them. And I've heard a lot of people saying they'd rather play Bruges. Yeah. So, And that's so, one reason we haven't looked into it. So Probably ought to play it someday. So, so a question for the... Uh, Listeners, what is your grill game and how much would you be willing to pay for it? Because I know we've had comments of people saying that, oh, that's my grill game. Like on the last. Yes. Sink Terra. Sink Terra was somebody's grill. Sink Terra or however you pronounce it. I I don't know. I think somebody said that's their grill game. They they can't find it. And And we bought that. We've had that since very early in our collection. Mm -hmm. And I've always loved that game. So it's not going anywhere. And it is hard to find. But I've also seen a lot of people say that um, Spirits of the Wild is a grail game for a lot of people. And that is extremely hard to find. We've actually found three copies of it. We have two and gave one to Justin and Jackie. Yeah, we did give one to Justin and Jackie because they really liked it and kept borrowing ours. Mm -hmm. So it's out there. And you can find it for a decent price. You just got to keep looking and, and hope for the best. Um, but yeah, that's a that was a Target one that I again I don't think will ever be released. I think Mattel is missing the boat by not re-releasing that. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of people are looking for it. Yeah, and right now would be a great time to sell it because two player games are still hot. They're, they're hot, and that game is well sought after. Yeah, yeah. So let's move on. Games you really want to play but don't need to own. I have a small list of games that I really want to play, and I don't know if. I know at least three of them I don't think you have any interest at all in playing. Okay. One of them's Dominant Species. Yeah, no interest. I, I'd love to at least be able to play it once. Okay. I, do I need to own it? Probably not. Okay. Twilight Struggle. Yeah, don't really have it, any interest it, in that one either. It's a two-player game, too, and people have said, oh, well, I'll teach you. And, it's like, and I've heard this is one of those games that if you're new to the game, you're going to get creamed. Being played by somebody who knows the game, you're going to get creamed. 
So I'd like to learn it with somebody else and see you would be the perfect person, but you'll never play it with me. Well, you know what? <clears throat> take your son, find it in a library somewhere, and take your son and go play it because he would love that game. Probably. You and Justin would have uh, a ball with that. The third one on my list is Glory to Rome. Okay. I got it out at the retreat and, <laughs> and looked at the rule books like, holy crap, let's do something else. <laughs> That's going to be one. And you, you guys had said, hey, let's go play this game. I was like, okay. Yeah. Uh, and the last one that's on my list is The Making of the President 1960, which I believe is another two-player game. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't, no I don't, I don't know anything it. about this one at this all. This is about the Kennedy-Nixon yeah. presidential debate or presidential run campaign. Okay. Again, Justin would love it. Yes, I know he would. <laughs> but those are four <laughs> of them that, that I know, at least three of them I know you have no interest in right. playing. One of them I don't know. The only one I can think of off the top of my head, because, of course, he thought of all this stuff after I went to bed last night. So I had no pre-warning until I was writing up my opening this morning. So the only one I could think of off the top of my head is Blood Rage. Only because yes. I've I've always heard good things about it. Mm-hmm. On initial look, it looks like a high combat. But the last thing I heard, and I don't remember who said it, and I don't remember what was even said. But I got I came away with the impression of that it was not all combat. That it was actually something I might enjoy. I don't think it's something I need to own. I feel it's another one of those great big games, and it's a rabbit hole of stuff yeah. that I don't need. The but look man, of it, I really want to try it just once. Yeah, like you said, first look of it, it looks like oh, this is a high combat, on the map yeah. fighting area control, which is absolutely not up my alley. And even the the title, yes, even the that. title, like blends to blood that. rage. So you're raging and. Yeah, it's got to be a war game. <laughs> right, right. And that's why it never really interested me. But the more I've seen on it, and I feel like it's one of those iconic games that I just need to play just to say I've played it. Yes. And what was the other one? I was just thinking of it. Um, <laughs> oh, it was there. Scythe? It was Go- Scythe. Yeah. Scythe is I'd the like other to one. i that too. Because they say Scythe, well, A Drama's Edge, if I'm not mistaken, is it's is it A Drama's Edge? There was one I remember hearing. No, was like the this... Edge is um, one game we've played with Bill. Uh, it's right there. We played it. The, uh, right on the tip of uh, my tongue. People are screaming at us. <laughs> the name of the game. I can picture the box. Dwellings oh, of Elder Vale. Yes, that's it. Yes, that was the the spiritual successor to Dwellings yeah. of Elder Vale. Um, and I know Blood Ray or Scythe is is this. Is something, and I don't remember. There, yeah, there's another anyway, game kind of like Scythe, but I guess. I've heard, again, I've heard great things about it. Mm-hmm. It never really interested me because of the dystopian there, look of it. But at the same time, uh, I feel like it's one that I need to at least experience. Mm-hmm. As a content creator, I need to have played it at least once. Yeah, and there is a little bit, I guess, a little bit of confrontation in there, there. I'm sure there is. And, there is in a lot of those types of games. majority and stuff. Yeah. So I'm I'm curious. So if you ever see us at a convention and you would like to sit down and play any of these games with either one of us, grab us and let us know because mm-hmm. we would like to, to learn some of these. Yep. So second question for everybody is what game do you really want to play but don't think you need to own? There you go. Curious to hear. I got a little bit of news this morning when I woke up. I, I, I seen this on saw Twitter. that. What the heck? I seen this on Twitter. So the title on USA Today says Cards Against Humanity sues Elon Musk's SpaceX over land bought to curb Trump's border uh, border wall. So let me read this a little bit and, and, and we'll come to that on it afterwards. Cards Against Humanity, the company behind the popular adult party game, has sued SpaceX CEO Elon Musk for $15 million. The lawsuit filed in Texas State Court on Thursday accused SpaceX employees of trespassing and damaging land near the U.S.-Mexican border that Cards Against Humanity purchased in 2017. Contractors have removed vegetation and placed gravel over soil to make a, the space available for the SpaceX vehicles to park and work, the lawsuit says. Cards Against Humanity attained the piece of land near Brownsville, Texas, using over $2 million in donations to protect the area, former President Donald Trump's plan to build the wall on the southern border. 
In an Instagram post on Friday, Cards Against Humanity said that Musk snuck up on us from behind and completely, with, and they dropped the F-bomb there, that land with gravel, tractors, and space garbage. SpaceX did not immediately respond to USA Today. It's a request for Friday's comments. In 2017, over 150,000 people donated $15 to Cards Against Humanities, plan to make Trump's effort to build a wall as time-consuming and expensive as possible. The plan was part of a six-day crowdsourcing campaign of surprise giveaways and political cause titled Cards Against Humanity Saves America. I think I remember something about that. I think Joe and Tony talked about that. I do not remember. I, I vaguely remember it. I don't yeah. remember the details about it, though. In the lawsuit, Cards Against Humanity says SpaceX has threatened the property as its own for at least six months without regards to Cards Against Humanity's property rights, nor the safety of anyone entering that has become a work site that is presumably governed by OSHA, safety requirements, and the lawsuit states. The company said that if the lawsuit wins, it will split the next proceeds with the 150,000 people to donate to the purchase of the land. Huh. Who donated to the purchase of the land? Well, this isn't enough to compensate our subscribers for the anguish they've suffered witnessing Elon Musk de defile our own verdant land where wild horses gallop freely in the Texas moonlight. We think it's pretty good start, the company said. The company created website Elon owes you $100.com with more information regarding the lawsuit. It also shared photos of the land, of what the land looked like in 2017 and 2024. So I, I seen the one picture of it and because uh, he had, they posted it on uh, X. And they showed it this nice fertile land and everything. And then this site, it looks like a construction site. There's tractors out there. There's backhoes up there. There's just guardrails. There's just all kinds of stuff all over it. I don't understand how SpaceX thought they could just go in and take somebody else's land. Exactly. Now, I'm sure there's got to be more behind it because SpaceX hasn't said anything. But I feel like. Yeah, I I see I this on no, I see this on X. I was like, is this real? So I I, I typed Googled it into it, Google, yeah. and there's multiple. Like the Washington Post had it, the New York Times had it, USA Today had it, CNN had it. Okay. And I thought, okay, so it must be real if all these places are reporting it. Right. But I do remember something about the last Cards Against Humanity uh, thing that Joe and Tony was talking about that they weren't they didn't want to back it. But they wanted to back it just for the just they don't the want to get the money the to part. yeah to I cards remember against them humanity. However, about, I don't remember everything they said about it, I but I remember know. them talking about. It. But I I seen that this morning. I was like, on Are you kidding me? Why do you think you could go just go in on anybody's land and just dump your stuff? Yeah, that blows my mind. And I there's got to be, I mean there's there's got to be legal reasoning to get them yeah. out of there. Right, and I think. Cards Against Humanity, although I don't like their game, I I think fifteen million is being polite. Polite, yeah, I think so too. For the damage they've done, I think so too. Yeah, because it would take forever. Even after, even if uh, SpaceX comes in and and cleans all that up, it's going to take years, years to get the, the ecology to, to come back. Yeah, yeah, for the wild animals to return and think it's wow. a safe space and everything. Unbelievable. Yep. I just I, it it doesn't surprise me, but yet it does. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. And I'm not an Elon Musk hater, no, but I'm, I'm not, not an Eli, Elon Musk supporter. I'm kind of just. I hear what's going on. It's like he whatever. He He's a billionaire a who thinks man. he can do everything he wants. <laughs> he is a unique man. Let's yes. just leave it at that. <clears throat> yeah. So. He's... But we'll let you guys form your own opinions on what you think about this. I know I have mine, but I'm just gonna not say much about it. <laughs> I thought I'd just report it and wow. let you guys hear about Interesting. it. Interesting. Okay. Well, moving on. Games we back. <laughs> this is where we're going to start talking about it. It has been a busy two weeks for Kickstarter or for crowdfunding. It's not even Kickstarter yes. anymore. It's crowdfunding because mm -hmm. 
I think all of these came off of Kickstarter, but that's beside the point. No, Dinogenics was game found, wasn't it? Dinogenics is game found. Okay, I, I just let that loose. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about that one first. Okay. This is Dinogenics New Arrivals Kickstarter, yes. the, the, the newest expansion for Dinogenics. Yes. We got to play this at the retreat because Jeff Knapp brought it. He did a video for it. If you guys haven't seen it, oh my gosh, go out go watch and watch it. it. It's hilarious. It is hysterical. He did a very good job. Go over to his channel, check it out, subscribe to his channel. His channel is called Tabletop Toolbox. Yes, I guess we need to say that. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, he, he does some awesome work. You can watch that. You watch his Voidfall one too. It's awesome. Oh my gosh, I'm so jealous of his editing skills on Voidfall. Yes. Anyway. But anyway, you can go over there yeah. and, and see what this one's all about. He tells you from the beginning of the base game of Dinogenics, adding uh, Control Chaos on it, and then what the newest one, uh, New Arrivals, does. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this also comes with a large box, box yeah. where you can put everything yeah. where into are we the box put now. that i don't know we're just have to get rid of some games <sighs> no we're not we're gonna have to come up with some creative <laughs> storage solutions yes we will <sighs> anyway but anyway so but this one this one added it added more cards but it added okay. a new way to get the uh uh market to the, move the, it, it added an Oh, yes, the market before, is more fluid now. It, yeah, it, before when you discarded cards, you just discarded them to the Boneyard. Yes. Now, when you discard them, no, you just discarded them, not to the Boneyard. You just correct, discarded you just them. discarded them. They were out of the game. Now, you discard them to the Boneyard, so it moves that Boneyard, and everything that comes out of the bone or the Boneyard. No, not the Boneyard, to the, the market. market. And everything, once the cards slide across and come out of the market, they go to the Boneyard. Correct. So that Boneyard gets bigger. The market is constantly changing around, yes. so you don't have to just keep selling things. Because there are it. spaces on there on the board now where you pick up three cards, you take one, you put the other two into the market. Yeah. So. So it it does make it. Yeah, the market is not as st stagnant as it used to be, which no. I did really like that. Um, it it adds some new stuff, and I I remember because we played with both expansions. We played yes, with Controlled played Chaos everything. and with New Arrivals, mm -hmm. and we've played Controlled Chaos mm -hmm. before, and I really liked it then. This time, like I said, we played with it all three. We played a five-player game. It was a little long. I didn't mind it, no. but it was a little long. <clears throat> but I honestly thought for the amount of decision space in this game, even at five players, I don't feel like it was overly long, at least not in my opinion. It took about two and a half hours, mm -hmm. but that included Jeff teaching Doug and Mary how to play because yeah. they'd never played it yeah. and teaching us the new stuff. Yeah. So I didn't feel like it was that long. I don't feel like any of us really suffered from AP very much. Nope. We might have each had a turn where we had to stop and think about it because somebody took the spot we had planned. Right. But it wasn't horrible. But anyway, yeah. no, I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to yeah. getting this one. It's a good so, yeah, one. this is available on crowdfunding. On, Not yes, crowdfunding. Game, game found. found. So go check that out. And like I said, go check out Jeff's... Uh, uh, video. Video. He does curious, a review yes. of the game for for the Kickstarter. You can find it on the Kickstarter page at the bottom where they start yeah. top showing the videos. But it's a great video. Go check it out. Go subscribe to his channel. Yeah, for sure. Next one we're going to talk about is Deep Shelf. This is the next series of games from the designer of Dinogenics. Oh, okay. This is the same designer, Bill Keen. I think is his name. I don't know. Let me check. I, I think that's his name. This is one we backed, oh my gosh, quite some time ago. Richard Keene. I'm sorry. Richard, Richard Keene. Okay, Keen. that sounds right. Um, we backed this one quite some time ago, actually, on, and I'm, I'm pulling up my spreadsheet now to tell you exactly yes. when we backed it. And this is an, actually a relaunch. Yes. The first one failed, but so did Dinogenics. Deep Shelf, we backed back in February of 2023. Mm -hmm. It was originally scheduled to be here in December of 2023. It finally arrived last week. Yes. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Finally, mm -hmm. we got it. But we've unpacked it. Yes. And I think we even went so far as to punch it and organize it. Yes. We have not played it yet. Yes, because we, we punched it and organized it and realized that one of my subs, the blue sub, of course, yes. my sub was missing part of it. So yes. I, I, I I posted on the uh, uh, GameFound page in the comments and they yep. pretty quickly, within probably an hour of me posting. Yeah, pretty quickly. They said, hey, send us a picture of what you're talking about. And then we'll go from there. And I sent it to him. And within 20 minutes after I sent the email, 
he sent back is like, hey, yep, that's definitely damaged. We'll send you another one. Yeah. Give us your address. Well, that was good. So I have a new ship coming. I don't know when it's going to get here, though, but it's coming. Okay. But, so, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting that one. I flight. don't remember a lot about the game. No. Other than it's the basically it's based in, in the, the ocean. ocean. I'm yeah. not sure exactly what you're doing in it yet. So, but we're going to get it to the table here hopefully soon. Yeah. And play that and we'll, we'll report back. Yes, for sure. And finally, the elephant in the room. <laughs> All right. So, we backed River Valley Glassworks Founders Edition back in April. It was not expected to be here till September anyway. Mm -hmm. And it did arrive yesterday. Yay. There is a lot of hoopla a lot of i don't even want to i don't think hoopla is the right word but you get my drift there was a lot of what's dissent i don't know about the fact that all play stated they would have these delivered to backers back in july and then suddenly there were delays and delays and more delays and more delays but yet the retail versions made it to target by the end of july and the retail versions made it to half or to uh, Barnes and Nobles, and they had a good chunk of stuff available at Gen Con, including the deluxe ones, including which is what the you Founders backed. Edition. They had limited they had copies, limited copies of it, though, but, but it was still there, right? So there was a lot of dissent among the, and I don't think that's even the right word, but again, negativity you get my drift <laughs> from the backers when. Every, I'm seeing it on the secondhand market already, for God's sakes. Yes. And I don't have my copy yet. Mm -hmm. My copy came in. It is beautiful. It has the actual the 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 ocean glass pieces instead of um, the acrylic. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I ordered an extra set of acrylic because in case pieces get broken or lost, I have acrylic pieces to replace them with, so it's mm -hmm. fine. But and it was only five bucks to order the extra set of pieces. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So, and I'm happy. I'm I'm anxious to play it again, but hmm. it kind of soiled you on the. It did. We were originally going to do an unboxing and do a gameplay of it and all that, and we may still do a gameplay of it at some point because it is a very pretty game. Yes. But I'm. I didn't bother doing the unboxing. Hell, I'd already unboxed it and and organized it <laughs> before, yeah, before I, I even got home. Got home. <laughs> So, but yeah, so it's finally here. Um, if you want to see a gameplay of it or a rules teach of it, please let us know. I would be more than willing to do so. Um, but at the moment, it's just, it, it has a home on the shelf already. I already found it a home, but mm -hmm. yes. Anyway, that's it. I mean, I can't complain. It did arrive on time for what they stated in the Kickstarter. It's just annoying. The fact that, that everybody else got their hands on it well, before the backers did. It's annoying that they tell us, oh, we're going to have them to you before Gen Con. Mm -hmm. And here we are six weeks after Gen Con before I finally get it. Yeah, and then what so was it, a, almost a month later when they came on? Well, the reason why it was there was because well, we couldn't get the complete order for all the backers. Right. But then we had contracts with these people to have it in these places at this time. Yeah. Well, sorry. Well, and I get the contracts, and it is hard to get into Target and things like that, so they don't want to lose that. That, And I get that. I do. But their communication has been lacking at best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they so, did actually did an update in the comments. They, they posted the update in the comments, and it was weeks before they finally posted in the updates where people would actually get the email about it mm -hmm. so you didn't see it unless you went looking in the comments for something yeah. which i did okay that's how i saw it i went looking in the comments to see if anybody had reported it had been delivered yeah so i'll be honest this is the first time i've ever given a kickstarter or a, a crowdfunding campaign the meh look instead of a happy look because mm -hmm. you know they ask you how you feel about this campaign and this is the very first time I've ever given it a meh look. I did that on my very first Kickstarter. Which was what? Castles and Crusades. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. I see why. Yeah. Anyway, but I don't know. I'm happy I have it finally. It looks beautiful. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> they could have made the box just about half an inch thicker, though. Oh, my gosh. Trying to get everything into that box is near impossible. <laughs> Tell us what you really think. It is hard. I thought DeVere was bad about overpacking their boxes. This one is packed. Because, of course, the Founders Edition has the playmat. 
Mm-hmm. So it has the play mat and the acrylic pieces and the double layered boards. And it's the same size box as the the retail version, which has single layered board and no play mat and cardboard pieces. And they didn't change the size of the box, at least not as far as I can tell. <laughs> but they give you a sleeve to put over the box to keep it shut. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was it was it was a rough. I had it took me almost ten minutes to repack that sucker into the box to get it all in there. Okay, we're moving on now. <laughs> we're going to move on to something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. This is what we'll talk about four games and let you know if it was old, new. Borrowed or or it that it blew. Right. Spoilers, there wasn't any of these no, for that. No, I wasn't blew. really unhappy with any of these. In fact, one of these is is completely nostalgic to me. It's one of those from my teenagers I absolutely adore. Well, let's talk about that one first. Okay. That is Pente. Pente was given to me by a friend in high school. The I have three copies of it now. One and one is our copy, which is the copy a friend of mine gave me in high school. And the other two are sit in the the travel collection. And it's not one dust? of which. No, oh my gosh! It was so long ago. One of those two copies we'll probably get rid of. We're going to go down to one copy. But so the copy I have is a black tube. We have the red tube and a actual board copy in the other collection. Pente is a large grid, just a just a square grid. The base game rules show for two players. Mm -hmm. Years ago, we started adding colors. Why can't you play more players with this? It makes it more interesting. We've had a lot of fun over the years playing this with five or six, eight people Mm -hmm. at once. As long as you have eight different color stones, who cares? As long as you can tell them apart. So the idea is you are placing one stone into one of the cross sections on the board um, on each turn. The goal is to get five of your stones in a row, which the more players you add to a game, the more impossible that becomes, or Mm -hmm. capture five sets of other people's stones. You capture sets by having two two of their stones encompassed between two of yours, but you have to, you can't like... You can't already, those two stones can't already be pre-existing on the board and two people place into your set, into it. You have to have one already down and then with a second, with the next move, encompass two other stones and then you can capture them. I don't know if that made any sense or not. It made sense in my head. Anyway, so (laughs) you're collecting five sets of other people's stones, essentially, it can be the same player. It can be different players depending on your player count. I have always loved the strategy behind this one. It turns into one of those games when you have a lot of people and somebody sees, oh, this person's this close to winning. Well, there's more people after me. They can take care of it. They, and it's left to the person who is right before that person to waste their turn blocking the win. But I don't know. I've always really enjoyed this one. Even at two players, it's very strategic. In yeah. how you place everything down and not getting yourself caught, but yet being able to capture the other your opponent. I love this game. Like I said, it has a nostalgic factor for me anyway, but I've always loved the strategy of this one. And it's still out there. I think mm-hmm. I've seen copies in the store still. Yeah, we played this one last night. Yeah. And I had a strategy going into the game, and I was like, okay, uh, I need those out of the way, so I'll let her capture those two. And the first two captures she made, I was like, okay, I needed those out of the way anyway because I'm going this way. And before I realized that she already had four captures, I was like, are you kidding me? (laughs) Where did the hell come from? And then she placed one. I was like, okay, I'll just block you off. Shoot, if I block you off, you can capture me anyway. So you're going to win no matter what right here. And I was like, how did that happen? (laughs) I was like, I had this perfect plan to go, and it just totally failed. And somehow you Fell got apart. two captures I don't think I remember seeing. And it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I played we smartly. were trying. Last time we played this was before you actually started recording. recording yeah, I have our no playthroughs. playthrough records of this. So it one. had to been at least back 2016, I think we said. I think so. I think I started, I, well, 17 maybe. I started actively recording plays January of 2018. Prior to that, I've got some plays listed, but I took those plays off of pictures that you had. Yeah. 
and go, went by the dates. Okay. I have no idea who was in the games or who won, mm-hmm. but I know we played it on such and such yeah. date based on your pictures. All I know is we couldn't go back and look to see who won. Because yeah. you, you were like, oh, I finally won this one. I don't think I ever hardly ever win this one. I was like, no, I think you pretty much beat me almost every time. I think I've won it maybe once. Maybe I'm thinking about the fact you, 95% of the time, you win abstract strategies. I love them. You win them. Yes. I love playing them. I love the strategy behind abstract strategy games, but I have a hard time winning them. Because well, it's I, just yeah. like resource management games. I love resource management games. You always win them. I do. Because you play the long game in those, and I always try and just get it someplace as fast as I can, and it comes back and, and shoot up the scoreboard really far, and then you always come back and beat me by like 90 points or something. <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> Okay, so let's anyway. let's move from our Pente and well, okay, so Pente falls into the something old, yes, for sure, yes, th- absolutely, it's definitely old because it, it's been around since at least you were in high school. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's like really I said, old. I got my copy in high school, my senior year of high school. So that, that makes it an antique. Well, shut up. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Let's talk about Four Shuffle. Okay. Four Shuffle, we played for the first time at the retreat. Mm -hmm. We picked up a copy on our trip back home from the retreat a few weeks ago. Um, We've played it once since. Uh, So we've played it four player, we've played it five player. Yes. Now, on our last game, I think one of the gentlemen who played broke the game. He definitely figured out a, a path to victory and ran for it and none of us stopped him. And so I blame the rest of us for oh. not stopping him. Yeah, he was us. Uh, he went tree after, after those tree hairs. After tree no, 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 no. Oh, that one. Oh, that's right. I was yeah, thinking not the, Dean. The, the other, other guy. Patrick. Patrick. Yeah, he Patrick went after those went hairs. Patrick went after the hairs. And the hairs stay. Okay, so the idea, let's back up for a second. The idea with this game is you are planting trees. You've got a hand of cards. You are pulling every turn. You can either pull two cards from either the draw pile or out of the meadow. Out of the forest. Out of the forest. It, it's actually called, it's called the meadow Forest in the game. Shuffle. I know, but it's actually called the meadow in the game. Anyway. Well, that breaks the game right there. Whatever. It should be out of the forest. <sighs> anyway. So you are either, you're pulling two cards or you are planting or laying, or you're playing a card. And by playing a card, you can either plant a tree. If you plant a tree or play a card, either way, you are discarding to the meadow a number of cards as indicated on the card you're playing. So kind of like... Um, Race for the Galaxy, where yes. you are paying for the card you're playing by paying other cards out of your hand. Yes. In this case, they're not just getting discarded, though. They are going to the meadow where other people can pick them up. Yes, which is the the, the which hard is part. how Patrick won. <laughs> anyway, you play you play at your trees, and the trees have scoring factors on them too. There's eight different species of trees in the game. Then there are the rest of the cards ha- are split either horizontally or vertically with two animals or two fauna or insects or whatever on each card each card is designed to be laid to the left to the right to the top or to the bottom of a tree that is in your forest with the couple minor exceptions each tree can only hold four animals or fauna or whatever flora flora not fauna anyway you know what i mean so each tree can only hold four cards the exception to that rule is the hairs the hairs state you can have any number of hairs paired together or grouped together on a tree they appear both left and right on the card well patrick went with that that strategy and the rest of us just kept feeding him hairs into the meadow right. nobody stopped him by the end i I think he had like 10 of them. Yeah. I okay, seen him doing that, but I was like, I don't think that gives many points. Oh, it does when you start multiplying them. Right. I didn't think about that. I, I don't think I've ever seen the card that does that where, where you well, start placing them. Or I've no, each, I don't think I've ever paid attention to the hair card. Each hair scores one point for every other hair in your tableau. Mm-hmm. If you yeah. have eight hairs, that's 64 points right there. And then he had another card that I've never, I, I don't think I ever caught the connection with as a fox or something that stated you get two points per hair in your tableau. He was scoring five points for every hair he had in his tableau between the two foxes and all of the hairs he had. Actually, no, not five points. 
He was scoring eight, 13 points per hair. I guess. He had I don't eight know. hairs I don't and what two the foxes. Score was at the end it of was, the game, he had but... like 134 points. It was ridiculous. Anyway, mm-hmm. he creamed us. Yeah. So now we've seen that loophole. <laughs> yes. Well, all Nobody the cards, will ever use that strategy. Card, <laughs> every card in that deck combos with something else. Yes. Or and if I you went... have like the butterflies, if you have all five different yes. butterflies, you score 20 points. Yeah. And, and different stuff like that. If you have the uh, uh, the bobcat and the road deer, it the bobcat's they, worth they 10 combo, bucks. But yeah. if you don't have the road deer in the or same forest points, yeah. or at the same tree, tree. it counts as and zero nothing. points. So. Yeah, and I went with the bats, and there was another animal that paired with the bat. You got the 15 squirrels. points, the squirrels, the flying squirrels. If you had 15 points, mm-hmm. if you had a bat on the same tree. Yes. I had three of those, three combos. So it, and the bats scored five points each if you had three different, of them. Yeah, the different types. So it was yeah, it was great. I I had a good score. I thought mm-hmm. I had a great strategy. Yeah, Patrick came back and creamed us. Yeah, and we all went after a completely different strategy. Mm-hmm. So it was very interesting. So I'll know next time to block that. Yeah. Don't keep throwing hairs into the meadow. I kind of wish that uh, we didn't explain what the bear was. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Adil took that. I see, didn't well, he? I seen the road deer though too. I was oh. like, I what the road deer didn't notice the bear, and you're like going, you see it too, and I'm like going, yeah, I see it because I already had I had the the bobcat <laughs> in my hand. I won the road deer, and then you pointed out the bear. I was like, because <gasps> <laughs> the bear will take will All empty the cards, out yeah. the meadow. I still don't think it it's should be called the meadow. The meadow. The forest and has a meadow. That's like saying the ocean has a lake. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you, you can see the comparison, right? Anyway, though, the bear will empty out the meadow, and you put those all in your cave, and those each card's a point at yeah. the end of the game. It didn't help him. No, it didn't, did that, though. But it took your road here. But it took my road here. <laughs> and I had... Because then I could have had two bobcats and two roe deers oh, well. at two different trees. Oh, well. And that would have been an extra 20 points for me, although it would not have helped me it in the game. It would not have helped you. But, hey, it would have been more points. Yep. It was interesting. I, I yes. did very much enjoy the game, and I enjoyed seeing that strategy used, and all of us just fell for it. We just, mm-hmm. nobody stopped him. And by the time any of us realized it, it was too late to stop him. We, yes. could, we couldn't stop him at that yeah. point. And so. like I said, the whole time I'm like going, it's a point per per rabbit or per hair. It's like, not a big deal. But it is. He's like, he's got 10. Okay, them. it's 10 points. And I didn't think of the multipliers. <laughs> I'm like going, holy crap. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. All right. So anyway, let's, it's let's, a good game. Yeah. Let's move on to a cooperative game called Intrepid. Okay. This is one we got at the Dice Tower Retreat in the Game Exchange. But it wasn't one that we actually picked. It's one you traded for I after traded the fact. for after the fact because I came back with Rex, which is the smaller version of Twilight Imperium. It's all about Mecha Pekka Rex, and it's all about the conflict there. One, I did not I, – I should have known it had a lot of conflict and stuff in it. But two, it was a three- to five-player game. Right. And for us to play it, we'd always have – to be able to play it all the time, we'd have to have, bring somebody in. Yeah. Well, Adil's wife get, went up Who to Who is new to game. gaming. Yes. And this she was her first year at the retreat. With the biggest box she could find, which was Intrepid. Which is exactly what Adil told her to do. Just find exactly. something big. And she he, she comes back and goes, see what I got? Isn't this a great pick? And he goes, yes, it's a great pick, honey. Although I already have the game. <laughs> I was like, well, what's the game about? Because it looked really interesting to me. And he yeah. told me that it's a cooperative game and you're and you're saving the space station and all this stuff. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you want to trade? This has this has confrontation and, and battle and everything. The things you really love in a game. He goes, sure. <laughs> and the one thing, I almost kept Rex because I was like, I can sell this because this is yeah. a... It's drill game for a lot of, of people, print, I think. Print, yeah. It's been out of print for many years, and it was it still in shrink. Right. I could have sold that thing for a lot of money, but I didn't want... I, I, I knew we weren't going to play it. Right. And I knew Adil had a game that he already had, and what was he going to do with it? Right. So I said, yes, let's trade. And he agreed, so now we have a trip. We did, and we played it. So let's go into the gameplay. What, okay. what this is about. All right, so... And we played it once. We played it last week. I'm trying to remember now. Mm-hmm. This is a... Dice placement game. Di- I was going to say, this was dice placement, wasn't it? Yes, yes. It is dice placement and dice manipulation. 
Um, so you're rolling, everybody has a set of dice. Mm -hmm. You are using those dice to activate certain things on your, on the space station, but you can only activate the cards you put out, the, the, the modules you put out and everybody's putting modules into the same space station. Um, but you are, and I think each of the modules is color coded, so you can tell whose is whose. Yeah, because each of the spots where you put your dice had your your country's flag in it. That's right. Okay, so and there are multiple countries. I think the box came with eight different countries at you least. could play from a complexity of one up through complexity four. And I, I think, think we found out there was an expansion. And I think that is expansions in the box. Yeah, I think so. Because yeah, that we have both of the South America or South Africa country uh, mm -hmm. astronauts. Yes. Which I think were the expansion. So you are using your dice to put out onto the different modules, and the different modules are giving you various resources and letting you do an immediate action. Like, for instance, it may allow you to increase the value of a die by one, or to re-roll one of the dice in your pool, or to move something from your, a die from your storage to your pool so you can use it. So it gives you that immediate action, but more importantly, it gives you resources at the end. For every die that you place out onto the space station, you get resources after the, the round is over. Yep. And those resources are used to make sure everybody stays alive. Um, you can use them to fulfill missions because uh, each in order to win the game, you have to fulfill three missions before you run through the entire I, I want to say tragedy, and that's not the right word. Um, there's another deck of cards that gives you all the bad stuff that happens. Mm -hmm. And for the life of me, I can't remember what the deck is called. But you've you've got to run through that deck. If you can get your three missions fulfilled before then, then you win the game. We did win with, I think, three cards left in the deck. Now, mind you, there were only ten to begin with, but we were also in the easy mode, the introductory mm -hmm. game. Um, this was called the training mission. So it wasn't it wasn't horrible. We only had a couple times where something bad really yeah. happened. Most of them were kind of moot at that. In order to fulfill the missions, each of the missions requires that you spend fifteen of something, fifteen of whatever you have the highest of, or you, you got to spend resources. You have to have the resources available to spend in order to activate that yes. mission, and you have to do it so many times in order to fulfill the mission. So the missions don't just get done and, and move. You you literally have to activate them like four times. And each time that you activate it, you have to spend more and more and more to fulfill the mission. So they, they get progressively harder. And they're all random. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the missions are all random at that. So they're yeah, not in there's any a stack specific of, order. of mission cards that yes, you just and you take draw three. three. So you never know at quite least, what you're going to get. Yeah, at least on the training mission, you draw yes. three. I don't know if... I, I, I know it says in the rule book that each mission gets harder and harder. I'm yeah. Like, oh, goody. So I imagine they do get warmer. Or get harder as warmer? they get warmer. I don't know where <laughs> that came from. Anyway, it, it was an interesting game. I, mm -hmm. I did enjoy it. Yes. Um, the boards are... I love the the thought behind the boards however they're warping oh the player boards yes the player boards, the player yeah. boards are warping because I, they're dual sided and dual layered so well, there's like they, three layers yeah well and they have that it is i'm thinking of the the resource boards that have that that plastic insert in them so that's constantly moving and it just it, the boards oh, themselves yeah, yeah, are kind of yeah, wonky. Yeah. Yeah. They don't lay flat because That's of right. that That's plastic right. insert mm -hmm. in it. Well, so, I, like I said, I seen in the post that, that people put like furniture mover pads yeah. on the bottoms, some thick ones, so that it sits up off the table, so the middle of it kind of goes down now. Yeah. And they use the uh, Velcro strips to Velcro grip strips. your your table mat. Okay. So that it doesn't move. I was thinking the stuff you always put under some of the boards that we don't want it, them to move. Yeah, which is just shelf liner. Yeah. It's some of that rubber but shelf liner. We have to get it thick enough which to I, get below yeah. where we need it at and put those on there and it would help a lot. Yeah. that's a, It's something to think about. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Maybe I could glue pieces of the shelf liner together, let them sit and dry or just good. Get, we get some uh, foam board, don't we? Do yeah. we still have some foam core boards? Oh, yeah, we do. Take that, cut squares, and then put the Velcro on the, it. Or that, the foam that liner. Stuff. Or the, yeah. the rubber liner. Yep. Oh, okay, that's an idea. Okay. Okay, you're, you're sitting here. 
<laughs> Did you enjoy our thought process here? Okay. There you go. Anyway, I thought it was a good game. Yes, um, it was. I'm I curious to play this at four players and see how tight it becomes at four. Yeah, I do like, though, they have the, uh, um, what are those called? The little um, chambers at the top of the board. Um the airlocks. Airlocks, where you could put a dice up there, and now somebody could actually use that dice. Your dice stays there. They just pull another dice out of their their, uh, their supply store, supply and and set it to the number it, you put up yes, there, and actually gets to use that. Yeah, number. so you can trade dice around, and yeah, there's four airlocks. So one person can give somebody else four dice, or you can. You yeah, know, some, when the airlocks are full, they're full. You can't use them anymore. Yeah, because if somebody's like, "I really need a five. It's like, "Well, I've got a five here. I'm not using. I'll put it in the airlock, and now you have a five. Yeah. Or you could put it in that, that center, the center where it gives you a resource. And of just one resource of something. In case yeah, you're like you one resource short of doing something. Or you something. have a die that you have no place else yes. to put. At least mm-hmm. it's a resource and of some sort. And you get to raise sort. that resource up so that you're good at the end of the round when right. it starts to decline. Yeah, it was interesting. I liked it. Okay, let's finally talk about River of Gold. This is a game at the retreat that a Dill and Bill tried to teach us probably... Four times, I think. Oh, probably. And every the time they went to go get it, it was gone. Yeah. It was it was off the shelf. So we ended up buying it and brought it to the last game BGI game day we had. BGI meaning Board Gaming Indie. It's a oh, local yeah. game group that we are part of and have really been enjoying yes. our, the events we've been going to. Yes. Because uh, it's a whole bunch of got people that are as deep into the gaming as we are, as we are, yeah, and, and even even more, I feel we've made a lot of good friends. <laughs> yes, so I'm. I'm anyway, excited so by that. we took it to that, and Adil finally got it to teach us. Yes, the game. and I enjoyed it. I, I mean, did too. I thought my 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 uh, strategy was going good until the end of the game. I was like, going, my strategy strategy absolutely sucked. <laughs> I but did I did it come in last. Nope. Adil came in last, so yep. it was a very good teach. Right, I won the game. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember why. You I don't remember us. the stra- I did cream you guys. Um, oh, my book is too far away to tell you the score. But anyway, uh, it was a good game. So I'm trying to remember the specifics on this one because we've only gotten to play it the one time. You have two boats on the river that are moving up and they're basically moving down the river. And when you get to the end, something happens and you move back up to the top and continue down. Each river space has access to three different areas or maybe four four each access has area yes. has access to four different spots along the river possible buildings that you're building three of them are possible buildings and one is just a blank spot no i think they're yeah, all you four buildings all of them. it is all four buildings okay the game only starts with a few buildings out you get four. a couple cedars out there and that's it it's like four to six of them something right. like that and then throughout the game there are ones available in the market you can build. Mm-hmm. Um, as you are moving down, you are rolling your die to see either how far you can move down the river and then activate the river spots adjacent to where you land. Mm-hmm. Or you can build in the area indicated on the die you rolled. Not the area you're in, the area indicated on your die roll. Yes. And the board is split up into six different areas or five different areas. Um so you can build, you've got to have money to do that. The spots along the river will give you money. They will give you resources. Uh, and then you're using that money and resources to do various things throughout the game. I thought it was really good. Yeah. I really enjoyed this one. I kind of got stuck at the beginning because the two cards that I had, I had to go to the same place to uh, build. Yeah. Or it was either build or sell or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was, though. But the two oh, cards, yeah, I had, had to be in one area, and I could never roll that area. It was yeah. the very first area on the on the uh, river. On the river, yeah. And I could never roll that icon to be able to do what I needed to do in that area. To and finish off that It was like thing, a third yeah. of the way through the game. I'd forgotten about the cards. And I yeah. could not get to it. And finally, I was like, oh, wait a minute. If I spin this i can turn the dice to what i need it and i had to do that to do both of those yeah and like i said by the time i got done with that you guys each had like three buildings you already had built on the board and all that i was like i'm way behind but well but you didn't have to play a card in order to build the cards just gave you extra benefits if you fulfilled them you didn't have to use those to build though no this was 
but there you, was something on the card that I had to go to. You had to, to be in that to area to activate, to activate the area. card. Yeah. Yes, I could not get to the area. Yeah. Or something. Anyway, the game wasn't as far apart as I thought it was. Oh, you looked it up. was. Okay. You had seventy-seven. I had sixty-eight, and Adil had fifty-nine. So yeah. it was still somewhat close. It just. I know you jumped out to a humongous lead in some yeah. place in there. I came up with a lot of extra points that I didn't realize I had. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to playing this one again. But yeah, it's a good did one. Did we explain how the game plays? I just did that. Okay, I was looking for the scores. Oh my goodness! Can you do it again? I missed it. No. <laughs> Wow. But yeah, River and Gold, it's really cool. I love the gold inlay on the game, yes, the board. It's, and beautiful. It, it's a beautiful board. Yes. Um, the boats, their wood, they could be they're, cooler they're fine. looking, though, but they're, they're fine. fine. Yep. So, yeah, River and Gold. So let us know if you've played any of those four and what your thoughts were. Yeah, it's a good one. Yep. So we're going to just slide on down to the hot seat. <laughs> Yay. And nobody sent in questions for you. So you People, I'm them. very disappointed. I have you to. to take them out of the box. Oh, yuck. Okay. All right. Let's, let's do this. Okay. So four questions. Her first question is. Oh, oh, this one should be fairly easy for you. Okay, good. What fictional character would you love to date? Fictional character? Fictional character. <laughs> I have a feeling I know okay, what this answer I'm is, but I'm going to have a. F <sighs> okay, if I had to pick one, I'm going to say Frank Hardy of the Hardy Boys. Not the one I figured it would be. <laughs> you were thinking Bo Duke. Yes, I you? was. <laughs> no, I, 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 and he would be probably my number two character. I, it would have to be Frank Hardy from the Hardy Boys. Yep. Okay. I was what well, I absolutely loved that series. I loved the book series. I loved the TV series growing up. So, and you know, Parker Stevenson was he was a dreamboat. <laughs> if you say so. All right. Next. Second question. How can someone push your buttons? I know the answer to this, but I'm not telling anybody. <laughs> Cuz I do it all the time. Um, ignoring me, not listening to me when I say something. What did oh you say? gosh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I mean, there's a lot of ways. It, I think, I don't know. Obviously there's lots of things that irritate me, but the biggest is, is just not listening to when I, when I ask you to do something and just to completely ignoring that I ask you or saying, yeah, okay. And then not doing it. Be it. Me? <laughs> it's not just you. Okay. But you know, that type of thing, or, or, yeah, we'll stick with that. That's that's definitely the biggest. I have your third question. i got to find a fourth one that's not. Rated R? It would not be the Meeple Society after dark time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so this one is, I have a tendency to do blank before I blank. What? <laughs> that's after pulling five of those after dark cards. <sighs> Okay, I have a tendency to do blank before I blank. Um, crap, I don't know. Um, okay, well, the first one that comes to mind is, you know, I have a tendency to brush my teeth before I go to bed. But that's that's like a, everybody does that. Or at least should. Um, I don't even know. I can't think of anything. I don't feel like I do anything weird or that is, well, what do you think? You act like you know what I should say, and I don't. <laughs> That's the look on your face. Okay. Um, okay. Well, the only other one I can think of is after when I come home from. And mind you, I come home from work. I'm usually home by two in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah, I'm home by two in the afternoon, so I have the house to myself for a couple of hours, typically. Remember, this isn't the after dark episode. And I didn't say that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway. I was going to say I have a tendency to clean up the house a little bit before I sit down to relax or to start editing or whatever I'm, my plans are after work. So okay. we'll just leave that. I thought maybe you have a tendency to start a chore 
before you leave the house. Well, yes, I do that too. (laughs) We're on a time restraint, and I'm in the car with a run, and she's in there doing laundry and loading the dishwasher or something. I have a tendency to clean the whole house before we leave on vacation, you know. Well, that's normal. Yeah, I think a lot of people should do that anyway. So your final question is... Okay. After going through maybe six after dark cards... I finally found this one. What is my superpower? Your superpower. My superpower. The one I want or the... Well, it does say what is my superpower, so I don't know if that means the what? person reading it or... Well, no, it'd I, be... I think it's you. Yeah. That what is your superpower? Sense. My superpower is probably multitasking. I mean, I'm not as good at it as I used to be. I Ironically, I, I'm losing that ability as I get older. But multitasking or doing a chore inside of a chore inside of another chore <laughs> that's like... called that's called squirrelitis <laughs> <clears throat> it's not a superpower no that's not okay. a superpower Darn that's it. an itis <laughs> <laughs> that's a condition <laughs> anyway we have a daughter-in-law that can help you with that <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks um i don't know um i would have to say organization or Sorry, a cat just ran through <laughs> and made a lot of noise. Um, yeah, I'd have to go with organization or multitasking. Why? What are you thinking? Those aren't superpowers, are well, they? Well, what are you thinking of a superpower then? I, I, that, I t- exactly. No yeah. The superpower I want. Oh, my gosh. If I had my choice of superpowers, much more interesting, I would have to say teleportation. I want to be able to be somewhere in an instant. You know how much time would be saved sitting in traffic? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Teleportation. Yeah. I'm thinking like uh, bewitched, you know, like wiggle your nose and what you want done is done. Oh, that would be nice, too. Oh, yeah. Especially with my job. Yeah. What, you want me to build you this deck? Okay. Doom. It's done. Done. There you go. <laughs> Check, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice, especially with the the front of the house all torn up right now. Oof. The front room, not the whole front of the house. Inside, we're we're in the process of emptying two rooms to build a studio. Yes, so, so we have to store things. The someplace. stuff is stored all over the living room and the dining room and the library, and those two rooms still have stuff in them, mm-hmm. and I'm out of space to move them. So it's going to be interesting trying to get these studios built, or this mm-hmm. studio built. So we'll see what happens. But Updates we got to empty the rooms out. There to be able have to do anything. emptied. They're but to do anything, I got to have the rooms empty. Well, yes, I know. They are emptied enough for you to take measurements right now. Mm-hmm. And then when we physically start building, then the living room is going to be impassable or almost impassable. I'm going to have to move cat food bowls. Mm hmm. Well, well a lot of that we just got to figure out what we're going to do with it because some of it ain't going to fit in the studio. No, and exactly. A lot of the stuff is just going to have to be gotten rid of, I think. That's a hard hard decisions to make hard decisions coming mm-hmm. anyway anyway so this is going to do it for episode 73 if you like this episode or any of our content and haven't subscribed to the podcast do so by going to itunes apple Podcasts, or spotify or wherever you get your podcast and while you're there give us a rating and comment this is how others can find the show but in the meantime if you want to follow us on social media just to keep up with us just follow the links in the show notes there you'll find links for Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, YouTube, Threads, Discord, and our merch shop. Or you can contact us directly at MeepleSociety at mail.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you at the next one.